This DVD is a production of the United Ostomy Associations of America. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you or someone you love is facing ostomy surgery. Or maybe you just went through it. I'd like to introduce you to some folks who've gone through something similar. Hopefully, they can address some of your concerns. And he says, um, you know, you have more than a hemorrhoid. You have a tumor or cancer or something like that. Just like that. The doctors told me, you know, that I was never going to live to see the age of, you know, 10, 15, 20. I went from being a normal, healthy 11-year-old to having my first blood test, my first rectal exam, my first colonoscopy. It scared me. That scared me. Scary to look at, uh, to wrap your head around that fact. I mean, you'd want to go for a walk around the block and you had no control of, you know, it, it, was, it was miserable. I was just too sick to hide anything anymore and... I couldn't get to work. I'd have to turn around and go home and, and clean up and... I would call my friends, my guy friends, and they would come carry me to the bathroom. There were times I laid in bed, you know, crying, thinking to myself, you know, how am I going to get through this? I know that was very hard for my family and it was hard for everybody. One of the first things I asked my doctor was uh, if I'd still be able to do all the things uh, that I normally do. I was worried about my quality of life, what would I be able to do. How to handle it, how to manage it. You know, I thought, well, gee, I'm not going to be able to do anything um, or go anywhere. But the reality was at that time I couldn't do anything or go anywhere because of the Crohn's disease. <laughs> we didn't even know what an ostomy was and that she needed to have it to survive. And he said, you'll have a, a permanent colostomy. And I said, colostomy, like the bag thing? And that was something I definitely didn't want to happen. Is it permanently? And my thought was, I do not want an ostomy, something hanging off of me, and anything I could possibly do to keep myself quote unquote normal is what I wanted to try to do. In my heart, I knew I had tried everything that made sense to me intuitively to be well and nothing else was working. I'm ready because I was that sick. I could have chosen to ignore the disease and died or I could take the surgery and live. I would like to be around for a long time, and this is the only way that that's going to happen for me. If it had not been done, I would not be here today. Whether you have colorectal cancer, bladder cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, or for whatever reason, there are millions of people living with an ostomy around the world. My name's Bob Baker. I suffered for many years before I was willing to accept ostomy surgery. And it's not so bad having a colostomy. I guess the only problem is I can't find shoes to match my bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you can. You can. They just look like crap. It took about a year before I could joke about having colon cancer. And even these days now when I perform in comedy shows, I dare to go there with, with comedy because I want people to realize that colonoscopies are really important. And it took me until about a year after my surgery before I really felt completely back to normal. And I tell people that. I think that's important to know that it's major surgery and it's a huge adjustment, body image adjustment, and you need to give yourself some time. So I, I feel that's part of my nursing role, my teaching role, is to use my experience to help others. After spending years of telling people who were about to have this kind of surgery or who have had it that they would be able to do everything they wanted to, I can attest to the fact that's absolutely true. I have an ileostomy and so I'm not only uh, president of the club, I'm a member of the club, if you will. Good morning, Mrs. Ellis. My name's Emily and I'll be your nurse today. I'll put my name up here where you can read it. Uh, having an ostomy has really helped me be, be more active and enjoy the things I always kind of wanted to do. But even just being having the energy for a little, a little puppy was something I would have liked to have, but it would have been too much. I never envisioned myself as a jogger, but I do it at least three times a week anyway. You know, even as a physician, given anesthesia to any number of patients who've had ostomies put in, and uh, you know, you feel terrible, so terribly sorry for them. And I think most of it is based on ignorance because I would give them anesthesia, they'd go home and I'd never know anything about their life after that. Lo and behold, they diagnosed me with, uh, with Crohn's and I reluctantly gave them permission, dreading the fact that I would wake up with an ileostomy. And I did. 
I was wondering if I'd ever play golf again. Now I play golf every day. <laughs> so, it didn't work out the way I thought it would. It was much better. Jason and a lot of other kids get surgery at a really early age. Um, I do hockey, track, and basketball, and soccer. Yeah, I can do swimming. Water parks? Water parks. I can do water slides on my belly. Yeah, my girlfriends know that I have an ostomy. Um, I told them in second grade, and they were like, doesn't matter. I see that you can do all these things, so you're fine. Well, I like going like and walking around and stuff with dad. Things that normal average kids do. I've lived with an ostomy my entire life. And, you know, being 17 years old now, it's become second nature to me. You know, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that are out there that are afraid to get the surgery because they're, you know, they think that it might hinder them from doing something that they really want to do. You know, I play football on the weekends sometimes, you know. Of course, my mom thinks I'm crazy doing that. It's just something that, you know, I'm comfortable with. And an ostomy just, it doesn't prevent me from doing anything at all. I'm a builder by trade and I was very concerned about my livelihood. I worried about whether I could even climb a ladder. It gets pretty physical. You know, when you first start off, you're trying to cover things up and hide things because you're all self-conscious about it. But after a little bit of time, it's just part of you and there's, there's no issue with it. In the last 18 months, I started playing um, hockey again, checking league and everything. I am an active state trooper. I wear a 30 pound gum belt. Um, basically, I tell everybody what you want to do, you could do. I am, I am very much into fitness and in California here we're really close to redwood forests. And locally here we have Mount Diablo which is uh, um, just a, a great mountain to climb and it's just right in my own backyard. Deciding to have an ostomy is probably one of the best decisions of my life. Oh, I've been rock climbing for about two and a half years. I feel like I'm climbing better than I was when I was 34 and healthy and without an ostomy. Uh, I'm in a relationship with Jenny and uh, she's definitely my biggest fan. For instance, she comes to all my dragon boat races and she's here today to even support me for the filming. Since when I was in the calendar, she's the first person who wanted to buy one and have it autographed. The colander produced by the Colon Club is a pinup calendar. It's a people who have had colon cancer and are under the age of 50. The Colon Club is a nonprofit organization dedicated to raising awareness about people with colon cancer. These volunteers are brave enough to show their scars and even their ostomies. You know, being in the colander is a pretty intimate thing to do, and it's not for everyone. But there's other ways you can get involved, like riding your bike and get your guts and gear. Get Your Guts and Gear is the ride for Crohn's and colitis, in which hundreds of people, many of them ostomists, participate. It's a challenging three-day ride that raises funds and awareness about these diseases. So what about the big questions? You know, what am I gonna be able to wear? What could I eat? How about intimacy? What about relationships? My chapter doesn't really care to hear about these meetings. They all blush. But when I go to national conferences, I very often talk about intimacy, and I do get a younger crowd, and I get a lot of questions. You know, usually I just want to try to get to know somebody first. You know, once you establish sort of that personal connection, you know, these other issues sort of become secondary. It made much more of a difference to Jason than it did to me. I think we picked up right where we had left off, and uh, activity's been great. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's documented. <laughs> We've never skipped a beat with anything and it's just reaffirmed how much we really love each other. We've been married for 32 years. Uh, intimacy has never really been a problem. My wife says that she really doesn't notice it. She lies a lot. But... <laughs> In a nutshell, it went from not being able to eat at all to, to being able to eat just about anything I want. To be able to eat again, it was, that, was, that was the biggest thing. Being able to eat again was really huge. I like Asian cooking just because there's a huge amount of fresh ingredients involved and I find it challenging and also relaxing. I eat anything I want to eat. I do try to make sure I chew it thoroughly, but uh, 
I don't restrict my diet to any degree other than I don't eat celery because I don't like it. <laughs> I loved clothes. So when I had my surgery, it was like, I can't wear anything because I have this bag and I don't have to hide it. And I just didn't feel attractive anymore. And in time, my girlfriend told me about a boutique that I went to that had nice clothes and there were salespeople who helped you and they showed me how to get around it. So I bet you're wondering what you might be able to do after ostomy surgery. Well, what do you love to do? You know, caving is a thing that I love doing. After I recovered, now I can do this again. It's absolutely wonderful. You know, I crawl through places. I, I go up and down on ropes to get into vertical caves. Well, it'd be a little tight to come up through here. Ted wants me to tell you that accidents do happen. Due to the action of the equipment in the ropes, I knocked the clip off the bottom of my pouch. So, are you going to have accidents? Yes. Yeah. Get over it, you know. You, you, you clean up and you go on. From Fayetteville, Tennessee, Tim Mitchell. This is, I guess, is what you'd call my office while I'm working and racing. And uh, this is something I really enjoy and am very glad that I was able to do it after I had my surgery. I realized that I was going to be back racing again. I was concerned about what, how I'd get in the car and, and how would the stoma affect me and everything. And as you can see, I have no problem with the belt going over my stoma. Been racing for the last five years. Out of the five years, I finished in the top 20, four out of the five, so uh, not bad for, for an old man. I am age 66 now and as an active farmer in the Midwest and, and running down a country road, the running was the way I could celebrate being healthy. I truly know that my new life began at the time of my ileostomy surgery in 1983. Prior to surgery, I never would have dreamed of some of the things that I can do now that I couldn't do then. Looking back on it now, I wish I would have done this years and years and years ago. It, it gave me my life back, it gave me my kids back, and it, it gave my kids a mom. If you can make something good out of something traumatic, then you come back stronger than you could ever have imagined. I mean, you, can, you realize that you really can do anything if you put your mind to it. I started playing racquetball again. I didn't think I'd play again. And it was actually the number one B amateur in Connecticut. So just get out and do things and just don't let it hold you back because there's no reason for it to. It's a huge adjustment to go from being the sick person to being the well person. I think that's the bigger adjustment than having an ostomy. But once you finally reach a point of accepting everything and feeling positive about everything, um, you kind of feel like you can climb over any rocks and <laughs> hike up any mountains and just keep going from there. That was Beth. She just got finished hiking the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. There's not much that's going to stop her, and we hope there's not going to be much stopping you. Staying positive is the most important thing to focus on. I focused on uh, exercise, staying healthy, eating healthy, living a healthy lifestyle, uh, getting back into the water as soon as quickly. And uh, I was back surfing about four months later. Uh, granted, it was taking it very easy in small waves and things like that. Um, since then, I've bounced back 100% and uh, it really has had uh, almost no impact on my life whatsoever. OAA is an association of affiliated nonprofit support groups committed to improving the quality of life of people who have or will have an intestinal or urinary diversion. Through the affiliated support groups, there are volunteers ready and able to help you with any questions that you may have. For more information or for additional resources, contact our website at uoaa.org or call us at 1-800-826-0826. I saw the doctor so much in that time of preparation. I started calling him the rear admiral 
not to his face, just you know, for fun. And then the morning of surgery, the rear admiral comes in and, and um, I had to ask him, do you think it's really a good day for surgery? And he said, why do you ask? And I said, well, you've got those little pieces of tissue stuck to your face. There's, um, you know, proms to go to and college to go to and a career. He can be a vet if he wants to. He could do what he wants. People are surprised when they meet Linda and I. They say, oh, you must be the one without the ostomy. And I say, no, you know, I'm the one that has the ostomy. Oh, then you must be the one without the ostomy. No, you know, and people are so surprised to find out, oh, you both have ostomies. Well, you know. It's had no negative impact on, on the way I've conducted my life. I've been able to, to camp, to work, to, you know, deal with the public. I've worked in social service for a lot of years. Uh, to do the physical activities that I want to be involved in, to wear the clothes I want to wear. Gave me a new perspective of life. It's a very humbling experience and um, made me a better person. I had a perfectly normal pregnancy. Um, I delivered my daughter via C-section only because she was breached, not anything to do with um, the Crohn's or the ostomy. And um, she was nine pounds, 11 and a half ounces. And she's perfectly healthy to this day. I decided that I'd been given a gift of life again. So I'm looking at a picture now of myself two years ago when I weighed 93 pounds more. I always say, I'm a rock star, you know, that's what my mom even like, says like I'm the hiker rock star when she writes me notes in my boxes and stuff.